Exothermic lemons loudly evaluate juicy quizzes. <laughs> you guys connect as quick as you can and if for some reason you can't connect uh, you we are going to be doing the homework the um, book work using Pear Deck so make sure you um, are able to follow along There's only five people connected, so I'm hoping that more people will, will connect. They threw a big section right after a factoring test. I don't know. My, uh, from my experience, like this tends to be one of the more challenging things to students. Uh, well, we're this time, yeah. Well, now I only have three students connected. How's that happen? <laughs> <laughs> How did we go down? y'all would please connect, I would really appreciate it. Right now it's showing four students. Can I get more than five students to connect, please? Okay, well, I'm gonna go ahead and start. Again, if you are able to connect, please do so. And if you can't, then at least be able to follow along because um, otherwise you will miss out on the, um, now we're back down to four. Oh, well, okay. Well, y'all like know. The clock, like the clock ticking forward and then it goes back a second. Uh, not yeah. Oh, okay. Maybe that's it. So now we're up to six. Thanks. Okay, here we go. Okay. So um, match each parent function to its graph. So you, these are the main functions that we're gonna be dealing with. So you should be able to look at these and know what the parent function or the, what the shape of the general function is. So
Well, y'all are doing good. The people that are participating for the most part. Okay, so. So what you really need to know is that y equals to x squared always looks like a U shape. Y equals X to the third kind of looks like like an S shape kind of going through um, the origin and then we'll be shifting those around. Y equals square root of X is like half of a parabola going left or right, depending on if it's positive or negative. Absolute value is always going to be a V shape. So those are those are um, shapes that you all should know how to do those, what they look like, the basic shapes. What happens when you add five to a function? Okay, most of y'all are getting this that are responding. Um, when you add five, notice that the five is on the outside of the function that would shift the function up five units. So this would be a V shape and it would be shifted up from the origin by five units. What happens when you subtract four from a function? Okay, so those of you that are answering are getting this one right. This would just be a V-shaped graph because that's what the absolute value tells us is V-shape and it's shifted down by four units. What happens when you add three on the inside of a function like this, Y equals to the absolute value of X plus three close absolute value? Okay, so on this one, if it's on the inside, inside lies. So it looks like that plus three is telling you to move to the right three, but actually it's telling you to move to the left three. So if you remember, if it's on the inside, it lies. It's telling you, it looks like it's telling you to go one way, but it's actually telling you to go the other way. So um, if you look at this slide before here, notice the minus four was on the outside of the function. If the number is on the outside of the function, you just do exactly what it says to do. You either go up or down. If it's on the inside of the function like this, x plus three inside the absolute value, that would tell you to take the V shape and shift it to the left three units. What happens when you subtract one and it's on the inside of the function? So this would be y equals x minus one quantity squared. What would happen in that case? Remember inside lies.
Okay. So in this case, it's inside the function. So that means it's going to shift right or left. And because it's on minus, you are going to go the opposite way of what that's telling you to go. And so you would move it to the right one unit. What happens when you have a negative on the outside of a function? What do you think happens when you have a negative on the outside of a function? Now we're getting this right good. Um, so when you have a negative on the outside of a function, it will flip over the x-axis. So if it's, if it's going upward, it winds up going downward. Cool. If it's a negative on the outside of the function, the function will flip over the x-axis. The last one before we start the homework. What happens when you have a negative on the outside of a function? Oops, I should have said inside of the function. I messed up. Um, because, okay, so I'm just going to tell you if it's on the inside of a function, it'll flip over the y axis. So that's what I meant to put here. All right, so uh, the next slides come straight from the homework. So we're going to be doing the homework by using these slides. And uh, hopefully um, you can get on to Pear Deck if you're if you're not on. Um, the password is in the um, in the comments. All right. So this first one says, in in your homework, it just says um, write the equation of each one of these graphs. So number one, um, I would like y'all, if you're on Pear Deck, I would like you just for number one to point to which one of those equations that would represent. Most of you, well, actually everyone's getting different stuff. So let's just talk about what's happening here. This is an X squared function. Most of y'all got that. So it's gonna be one of these first one, two, three, four, because it's quadratic, which means it's gonna have a square on it. It's been shifted to the left two units. Okay, left, right shifts always happen with inside the parentheses and inside the parentheses is always the opposite of what you would think. So this just shifted to the left two. So you think it should be minus two, but it's not, it's plus two. So you're right, the right answer here should be y equals two x plus two squared. All right, what about number three? Again, um, I want you guys to, um, just for number three, pick which one of these functions would represent number three. Good. Y'all are getting it. Good, everyone's getting this one. Good. So firstly, you know that it's a square root function. So it's gonna be one of these G, H, I, or J because they're the only ones that have square roots in them. It's shifted to the left three, but oh, so you know that um, it's gonna be inside the function. So it's gonna be one of these two right here. There's no, there's no vertical shift. It's just a horizontal shift. And because it's, shifted to the left three, you would say y equals x plus three. 
and everybody got that, I think. Okay, now just do number five. Okay, good. So you know that it is a V shape, so it's going to have to be either E or F. And it shifted to the left two, so that means plus two is going to be on the inside of the function. And then it shifted down one, so it's going to be minus one on the outside of the function. So it would be going to E. And if you're doing this on your own paper, which you should be, then you should have written one y equals two x plus two quantity squared. Number three, you should have written y equals to the square root of x plus three. So just make sure you're writing the correct answers down on your paper. Um, and number five, last one. So on number five, pick which one it should be. Okay, so on this one, we know that this is going to be a square root function. So it's going to have to be GH, I, or J. It's shifted to the left two. So in the inside of the function, we're going to have to have a plus two. And then it's shifted down three. So outside the function, we'll have minus three. So this one should be y equals the square root of x plus two, and then minus three on the outside of the function. Any questions about those? Okay, this says suppose h and k are positive numbers match each equation to its graph. This is exactly how it is in the, in the book. So um, I want you guys to, what, what one would C be associated with? Y'all um, just C. I don't know why I did these out of order, but just tell me what C would be. If it's shifting to the left two and up one, and it is a quadratic. And I said the left two and I meant the right two. And it, yeah, so that's right. Y'all are getting this right, good. Uh, so the only ones that would be applicable here would be number nine and number 10 because they're the only ones that are quadratic. They're the only ones that are parabolas. And since you have you have a right shift and then you shift up, you're going to go minus and then plus. So that would be number nine would be C. Okay, what about D? Good. Well. Be careful with D. There, that's better. Yeah, okay. So D 
we know is um, going to be a square root function because it looks like half of parabola and it's shifted to the right one and up one. So that would be on the inside, you'd have a positive and on the outside, you'd also have a positive. So that would be on the inside, you'd have a neg negative because you're shifting to the right and on the outside, you'd have a positive. So 12 would match to D. Okay, and then I'm looking at everybody's here. Number A, go ahead and do A and B. We'll talk about those. So A, we've shifted to the left two and down two. We know it has to be a square root function because of the shape. Left two means it's on the, the uh, left and right always happens on the inside of function and it's always the opposite of what you would think. So if we're going left two, that would be plus H and then minus K because the vertical shift always happens just like you think it should. And then by the process of elimination, of course, B has to be 10. 10 has to match with B, but we know that anyway, because this is quadratic, which means it's shaped like a parabola. So it has to be one of these two squared ones. Um, it's shifting to the left, which means you have to have a plus here inside the function. And then it's shifting down one, which means you're gonna have a minus on the outside of the function. So I want you to write an equation um, where f of x is equal to x squared. You're using quadratic. In other words, the parent function is the quadratic. And I want you to shift it to the right two and down three. Um, and name it something else because now it's a new function, right? So name it like g of x or h of x or whatever you want to name it. And um, then on the same axis, I want you to graph both the parabolas. So what I'm gonna do right now is graph the first one with you guys and just for fun. All right, so f of x equals x squared. When you go to graph that, if there's no shifts, it always starts at the origin. Start right there. And this is how you graph um, an x squared. First of all, I go to the right one. And if you square the number one, that would be one. So you go right one and up one. Then from the vertex, you're gonna go over two. And if you square two, that gives you four. Then go over three from the vertex. And if you square three, that gives you nine. And then there's, everything is reflected over the Y axis. So wherever there's a point to the right, there's also gonna be a point on the left side of the axis. And it's going to look like this. And try to make it look like a, as U-ish as you can. It's definitely not a V. All right. Let's see how y'all are doing on that. So then, oh, that's great, 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 great. So um, let me see. Good. Okay, so mostly you're getting this. Um, so if we're doing this, right two means that if I'm gonna say g of x equals, cause I wanna name it something besides f of x, cause now I'm, I'm transforming the function. Right two means it's gonna be inside and right 
we're going to go the opposite of what we think and as far as writing it down. So this would be x minus 2 squared. And then down 3 would be minus 3. So if we want to graph g of x, we can just take each one of these points on the original um, curve and shift them to the right two, one, two, and down three, one, two, three. So I just would take every single point on the original curve and shift it to the right two. And I, so I'm telling you, you guys, my sense of direction, sometimes I'll say left and go right, and you really have to watch me. So this should have gone right two, one, two, and down three, one, two, three. And we're taking each one of these points and doing the same thing, right two, down three, right two, down three. Right two, down three. Right two, down three. Yeah, I don't think they had anything like this in their notes where they shifted a function like that. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I don't remember going over anything like that in the notes, to be honest. Huh. I, think, I think they just popped this in for the, for the homework, I guess. Yeah, that's, it's, uh, there, it's all these rigid transformations. Um, okay, so if you look at 31, they're asking you to draw each one of these. So I, I gave you the graph on each one. So on 31, y equals f of x plus 2. So let's let this be a. And what would you do to the original function if you're just adding 2? What's going to happen? Oh, I need to actually share the slide for you guys. They gave them stuff like this, but they didn't make them derive the formula. Is what I was oh, saying. oh, okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's it's weird that, that that doesn't match. Oh well, hopefully they won't give it on the other. But they went this way, so they just have to, have to kind of go the other way and then bring. Yeah, it. and you you know, and I, they'll see it more when you're on uh, next time too when you're doing this. Okay, so on this one, f of x plus 2, let's see what y'all are doing here. Okay, so this one, the plus 2 is on the outside of the function. So that means you're going to add 2 to every single add 2. So instead of being at 2, 2, we're now going to be at 2, 4. We're going to add 2. To the y values instead of being at zero negative two we're shifting the whole thing up two so now we're at zero zero and instead of being at negative two two we're going to shift it up two so now we're at negative two four so our new graph looks like this so the whole thing shifted up two Okay, on this next one, this says, this is B, I'm going to do B right here. This tells me to go to the right two and down one. Okay, so I'm just going to show you what I'm doing here. So I have, um, I could either just do it straight out, right two, down one, right two, 
down one, right two, see there I go again, going the wrong way, right two, down one, right two, down one, right two, down one. So the new function would look like this. If we're looking at the points, like on an X and a Y grid, Whatever is happening on the inside of the function affects uh, the x, and whatever is happening on the outside of function affects the y. So on this case, we would be adding 2 to each x and subtracting 1 from each y. So if I did that in the chart, if I added two to each x, negative two plus two, that would give me zero, two, and four for my new x values, and subtract one from each y value, that would give me one, negative three, and one. So zero, one, that's right here, two, negative three, that's right here, and four, one would be right there. And lastly, we have um, y equals negative f of x. That just means to flip over or reflect over the x-axis. So this 0, negative 2, if we reflect it over the x-axis, is going to become 0, 2. This 2, 2, if we reflect it over the x-axis, is going to become 2, negative 2. And this negative 2, 2, if we reflect it over the x-axis, is going to become negative 2, negative 2. So basically, when you have a negative on the outside of the function, you just take the, op the x values, stay the same. and the y values are opposite. Would that be drawn going upside down? Oh, thank you, yes. <laughs> well. I was just thinking because if we reverse all the y's, then it would go up. Yes, down. yes, it, absolutely. It will look it will look like an upside down u. Right, right. It's hard for me to because my mouse is so bad. It's like all ugly. I I can imagine. Yeah, I know. That's why it's hard for me too when I'm having to I'm use it. Okay, on this one, um, you're going to be shifting to the left one and then up one. So you can totally take those points and just go left one, up one, left one, up one. You, you can do that. Or you can make your little chart. All right, this tells us that we are going to subtract one from each x value. And this tells us we're gonna add one to each y value. So the points we start out with are negative two, zero, negative one, two, zero, zero, one negative two and two zero. Um, so, our, our, our drawing tools went away. Oh, what happened there? I wonder. Yeah, because I was clicking, but it's not. Well, that's irritating. Hold on just, oh, 
Hold on. Why, probably. Okay. No, I think they're just gone for whatever reason. I don't know why they just totally disappeared. This is why I get irritated. Yeah, I don't know what happened. I'm sorry about that. Okay, we're just going to have to just do it from here. Uh, so just on your paper, just do it from here on out. Um, so on this one, I've listed all the points, the original points. And now I'm going to do this. I'm gonna subtract one from each X. and I'm gonna add one to each Y. So you always do the opposite. If it's on the inside, you always do the opposite of what it says to the X. So on the outside, you do exactly what it says to the Y. So this would become negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, and one. And this would become one, three, one, negative one, one. So the new points would be negative 3, 1, negative 2, 3, negative 1, 1, 0, negative 1, and 1, 1. And you would get the same thing if you just were to um, do the shifting to the left one, up one, to the left one, up one. Take every single point and do that. Um, on B, this to me, I, I would rather, when you start flipping it and then shifting it, you, you can do it totally if you want to by doing a flip and then shifting the flipped um, version down one. So, but I'm gonna do it by using the points. This tells you to take the opposite of the fun of the y, and this tells you to shift down one or subtract one from y. So the X values are staying exactly the same as the Y values that are changing. So um, I'm gonna take the opposite of all the Ys. So first of all, that's gonna be, it'll stay zero, that'll be negative two, that'll stay zero, that'll become positive two, and then that'll stay zero. And now I'm gonna subtract one.
So that would become negative one, negative three, negative one, two, negative one. So my new points are negative two, negative one, negative one, negative three, zero, negative one, one, two, and two, negative one. And you would have got the same thing if you had flipped it and then shifted the whole thing down one unit. What happened here? Yeah. Oh, two, negative one. Oh, I didn't shift. I didn't do that one. This should be, that should be a one, right? So that's not symmetric. It should look like that. The whole thing should be shifted down one. Okay, this one says use transformations to show how the graph of F could be found. So all they're doing here is telling you um, what's happening in this graph. This is a square root function. And what's happening to it? What are we gonna be doing to, to, to the square root function? It starts like this. What does the minus tell us to do? Flip. Right. Over what? The x-axis. Right. Flip it over the x-axis. So, so I'm going to flip it over the x-axis. And you can say that if you want. You can say reflect over the x-axis or flip over the x-axis. OK? And then what does this plus five tell us to do? Go to the left. Uh-huh. So then, then shift left five. And you don't have to, you don't have to draw that, but this is the order it would be. This would be, we'd start just with our basic half a parabola, and then we'd flip it, and then we'd shift it to the left five. So this is, it says use transformation to sketch the graph. So again, um, I'm, I am going to go ahead and start with a basic square root function. And when you start with a basic square root function, um, you can't take the square root of a negative, right? So you're gonna want to start with zero and higher. So what this, I'm only gonna use perfect squares. The square root of zero is zero. The square root of one is one. The next perfect square is what? Four. Mm -hmm. So the square root of four is two. two. And what's the next perfect square, just for grins? Uh, nine. Nine. And the square root of nine is? Three. Three. OK, so whenever you have a square root function, you want that. This is how you want to start it, always, OK? Regardless of anything, just start with those nice, perfect squares. I'm going to go ahead and graph it. Just. So there's zero, zero, there's one, one, there's four, two, and then nine, three. So this is what the parent function looks like. Okay, now what does this minus three tell us to do? 
Shift it to the right three. Shift to the right three. And what does it tell us to do the y values? Add two. Add three to the y values, right? Add. Add three. Three to the y. Okay, if it's inside the function, you do the opposite and you do it to the uh, y values. You said y values. I think you meant x. No, oh. I, I mean y. You add three to the x value, right? No. You add two to the y, right? Is that, is that oh, you're right. You're right. Was I, I did, off? Yeah, no, no, no. You're totally right. Oh. Sorry. Uh, I, I did mean x. <laughs> but what, what if there's more than two numbers? Like, what if they put a third number? Or that just wouldn't work then for a graph? They're going to do uh, multi tomorrow uh, on Monday, you're going to do some stretches and that's when they start multiplying um, these things. And but Matt'll Matt will do that on Monday. Uh, but right now we're just doing like two things at a time. So, so these stay sort of like in the linear way of being y equals mx plus b usually, correct? No, because you're supposed to graph these. Yeah, but they're not linear. Oh, well, what I mean by linear, I'm sorry, is that it's similar to linear. Yeah, least, yeah. Where they've there's got, a slope got, and a... Yeah. They've got a, well, they've got a rate of change, but they're not a, a con, uh, like lines all have constant rates of change. Okay. These have, but they, but there is a, a pattern to all of these for sure. Mm, yeah. so, okay, so, so that meant to add three to the X values, which I'm such a goofball. So I'm going to add three to all the X values. And then what does this tell, the plus two tell me to do? Add two to the y values. Add two to the y values, which is what's that going to do to the graph? What's up two, right? So it's up two, and you will get that by adding two to the y values. Okay. Three. So I'm going to add three to the x's, and that's going to give me three, four, seven, and twelve. And I'm going to add two to the y's, and that's going to give me two, three, four, and five. And I'm going to graph those points. And I will get exactly the same thing as if I just took this nice little half a parabola uh, square root function and shifted it to the right three and up two. So you try to keep that in your head because uh, that's kind of like your check. So three, two. We'll be right there. Four, three. We'll be right there. Seven, four. And 12, five would be somewhere like right there. So it would look like that. So we just took every single point, shifted it to the right three and up two. Okay, now this one, um, be careful, because I would I would rather write it like this. And again, I'm gonna I'm gonna start with the basic square root function. Anytime you have a square root, always start with the basic square root function. Zero, zero, square root of one is one. Square root of four is two. Square root of nine. Oops, is three. Memorize those if you need to. That's how you're always going to start. Now this minus, what does that tell us to do? Flip. Flip, right, over what? X axis. Flip over the x-axis, right. And it's important that you say, when you're saying a reflection or a flip, make sure you say the axis, because otherwise we don't know. So I'm going to go, go ahead and graph this. It's 0, 0, 1, 1, 4, 2, and 9, 3. Okay, so this is my parent function right here. This tells me to flip over the x-axis. And how would I do that on my chart? What would I do? Would I do something to the x or to the y value? If it's on, okay, and if here's the hint: 
If it's on the outside of the function, it always go, goes with the y. If it's on the inside of the function, then it affects the x. So what would that negative affect? Since it's on the outside of the function. Y values. Right. So this is gonna that's gonna tell us to take the opposite of the y values. And then what's this plus one gonna do? Let's shift it to the left one. Not left. Right. Okay. Not right. It's on the outside of the function. Outside, my bad. No, yeah. Up one, right, is because it's on the outside of the function, right? It's it's totally right. not under that radical, right? The way I wrote it, it was inside the function. Yeah, and that's a really good point. You have to be very careful how you write things that, because it really, really matters whether something's inside or outside the function. And square roots are really easy to um, make. It, it, they get confusing if you don't be really careful. So here this Understood. tells us to go up one, which is the same thing as doing what to what value? Which, which uh, X or Y is it gonna affect? Y, right? Y, right, so we're gonna add one to the Y values. Okay, so first I'm gonna take the opposite of all the Ys. Um, so that would be zero, negative one, negative two, negative three. And then I'm going to add one to each one of these. And so that would be one, zero, negative one, negative two. So my points are zero, one, one, zero, four, negative two, and I mean four negative one, sorry. And nine negative two. So it looks like. And you would get exactly the same thing if you had just flipped that and shifted every unit up one unit. Okay, last one. Now, first of all, uh, x my a cubic function. You need to uh, remember a cubic function looks like kind of like that. Okay, it's like um, it always is going. Um, it doesn't change directions, but it uh, it has like a little kink in the middle. So I know that the the graph is going to look like this, and I'm going to start by taking some doing some perfect cubes. And cubes can, uh, we're, we're talking about positive numbers, negative numbers, whatever. So I'm just going to go, um, I'm going to start with, um, let's say, negative 3. Nah, I'm not going to start with negative 3, that's too big. You, it, it doesn't really matter. You can start with some number, a small negative number. Negative 2, and then I'll go negative 1, 0, 1, 2. I just picked some pretty small numbers because when you start cubing things, they get big pretty fast, right? So if I take negative two minus one, so negative two minus one would be negative three and negative three to the third power is negative 27. If I take negative one, you know what? Never mind. I'm not. I'm. I'm going to start over. Sorry. I'm going to just go ahead and just do perfect cubes. Period. And then I'm going to do the transformation. I got sidetracked. So this would be negative two to the third, which would be negative eight. Negative one to the third would be negative one. Zero to the third would be zero. One to the third would be one. 2 to the third would be 8. OK, and I'm going to graph those paths. This is the parent function right here. So negative 2, negative 8. Negative 1, negative 1. 
zero zero one one and two eight. Okay, so it looks like this, which is what we, we knew it would look like because it's a cubic function. Now all this does is do what? That minus one, all, what is the only thing that's gonna happen in this problem? So is that minus one inside the parentheses tell us? Move to the right one. Right one, right. And um, how would we do that on the uh, with the numbers? Which one is it going to affect, the x or the y? If it's the on x. The, uh, if it's on the inside, yes, it's going to affect the x. And is it going to be? So and it's going to be the opposite of what we think, right? So we're going to add one to the x values. So that would be negative one, zero, one, two, and three. So now we have negative one, negative eight. zero, negative one, one, zero, two, one, and three, eight. So all it did was take our original graph and shift it to the right one. Okay. And that's it for today. And on Monday, um, we'll be doing more of these, only we'll be packing on, um, they won't, these are called rigid transformations because the shapes did not change at all, right? You kept this, the same shape, you were just moving it around. On Monday, we'll take transformations and we'll be stretching them and we'll be um, shrinking them and so they will, they'll keep the same shape, but it'll be, uh, they'll look like they're fatter or steeper or wider or all sorts of things that gets a little bit more um, complicated. But it's basically the same thing. The main thing, main takeaways from today's lesson is, do you know the basic shapes of the um, parent functions? You should know that absolute value is a V, that quadratic is a U, that square root looks like half of a sideways parabola and that cube roots look like this little snake thing. Um, those are the main ones that we're gonna be dealing with in these, this class. Any questions? Oh, ma'am. All right. Well, y'all have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful weekend. And uh, if you need any, let me know. Thank you. All right. Bye, you guys. I didn't, I really don't know what happened to my that pear deck. It just disappeared. It's so bizarre.